Masters. I'm riveting from In The Mix. Um, we're here tonight at Slinky down at the Rod Laver Arena in Melbourne. And with me, I have the number one tech female techno mm -mm. DJ. No. <laughs> There's some discrepancy here with my introduction. Why do you have to say female? Is it about the music or about the gender? Uh, no comment. Okay. <laughs> um, that's what the flyer said. Yeah. The flyer I, quotes in, you as the fact, number one female DJ in the world. In fact, Agent Matt apologized for that comment. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's so. nice. Hmm? That's not yeah, that's nice, but that's not them, so, you well, know. Well, after your two-hour set tonight, um, which I think Relentless is definitely an understatement, nice. I was very, very impressed, and I'll definitely put you up there with the world's number one DJs. That's not better. Female. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is your first time in Melbourne, is it? In Australia, in yeah. In Australia, yeah? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been spending a few days here um, before... Um, uh, during the, this week, this past sure, week, yeah. but it is my first time in Australia. Tonight was my first really performance in Melbourne, right. and yesterday my first in Sydney. Tomorrow my first in Perth, and then we've already we've already heard some reports about your night at Crunch last last night. Was it? It was really good. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. heard you went off, and it was really nice. tonight was exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is nice. I had fun. I, I love it so much. Yeah. And people, I mean, the more I have feedbacks from the people, yep. the more I'm good. And and if I have to do a mix CD in my studio in front of a wall, yeah. I need a week to record it because yeah, I'm crap. Sure. Yeah. I'm crap. I'm total crap. I'm like, I can't believe it. And sometimes I'm like, that's it. I'm changing job. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm crap. I can't mix anymore. Have you thought of maybe doing some live recordings, some live releases? Yeah, yeah, which I will next year. But the thing is that I have a problem with that is that um, when it's live, sure, the progr programming will be nice because I have the feedbacks from the people. Yeah. But then I do so many tricks that it's fun live. But when you're in a car driving or in your in your living room listening to that CD, sure. and every second the bass cuts off and in and off and in, you're like in a club or in a party. It's it's fun, but in your house you're like, oh god, switch CD, you know. So you try myself, I can't even stand when I hear myself record it live and all these cuts all the time. I'm like, oh my god. So for your CDs, you think people listening to the home they want to be a bit more crazy? Maybe not, but if I'm if I think that way, yeah. then my my critics are the first one that are important because yeah, I wouldn't sure. release something that I'm not comfortable about. So therefore, I wouldn't because myself, I, I and in fact myself, I'm not like I don't get annoyed at it by only hearing me, but any other DJ that give me a live recording, it might be as amazing yeah. as as I never heard. But if it's too live, too much, yeah. I, I get annoyed. Sure. So it's not only for my own things. So you it's, know? A, it's a fine, a good balance will be nice. I mean, it's nice to hear some crowd in a, in a mix CD every once in a while. That's fine. Okay, yeah. If it's recorded the way that you hear the crowd, that's fine then. Sure. Oh, okay. But the recording, if it's like that, it's always a bit different. less quality, I yeah. think. Yeah. But um, good idea, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. We've got Relentless Beats Volume 1 out, out at the moment. Yes, on Moonshine. This yeah. is selling, I mean, it's, it came out in February last year sure. and it sold so well. In, in only half a year, it's up to about 13,000 sales. Well, that's fantastic, yeah. It is because um, the thing is that Moonshine sells mostly in North America. So when you think 13,000, you're thinking North America, sure. not throughout the world. So it's a really good number for just, a, oh, you know. Fantastic. Never mind worldwide sales. Imagine. Yeah. But the thing is that they don't reach. I know they sell it here in Singapore, in England, but not as much because it's yeah. an American label. Yeah. So, Do you um, find that but techno it's is, well. is very pre prevalent in, in, in America, in, no in North America? Do you think it's, um, I mean, a lot of DJs that we've, we've met that have come to Melbourne have said that Melbourne is one of the, the destinations for techno in the world. Would you say America is up there as well? Not at all. <laughs> Far from it. Yeah, that's, that's what I if, if I would say a destination where you can go and play techno like you want and have a good response from the people, I would say Montreal. Not because I live there. I swear. There, I swear. Not because I live there. Um, because then, if I were, if I want to be patriotic, I'd say anywhere in Canada, and it's not true. Sure. Anywhere in Canada, you play techno, and people are like. <laughs> yeah, like like all over the states, in Montreal, and that's perhaps because of the locals, which are me and other people. Well, I mean, I'm techno, right? Sure. Every city is influenced by their locals. If their locals play mainly a style, yeah. if it's f 
folk than the like folk. The folk that's yeah. how it goes. Yeah. So I play techno, and a lot of my friends that are locals from Montreal, they play techno. Maybe it's that's why. Yeah. Maybe that's why Montreal is more techno, and then you go to Toronto. Toronto is more progressive drum uh, and bass. Yeah, so. but that's because of the DJs they have. Had you heard a lot about Melbourne before you came? Had you oh yeah, Christian Smith. Yeah. He's my best friend. Yeah. And he loves Australia yeah. and especially Melbourne. And Melbourne loves this, loves Christian Smith. Christian, I know, I know, I know yeah. I saw his, his last set at seven um, a few months ago, which was just amazing. Right. And I actually already knew prior to this interview that you um, were friends with him, but I actually see some similarities in your sets. I really get into DJs that are in tune with the crowd, oh, look up important. and talk to the crowd and whistle it's and, important. And, I, and, yes. I, and I wasn't sure whether the, the audience were enjoying your set more than yourself because you were just so into it, it's mm. fantastic. That's, that's perfect, that's yeah. important. Definitely. How many DJs do you have in the world where chances are that if you're a techno DJ and you have, okay, let's say you put, you put six techno DJs, six, seven, eight, whatever you want, sure. in a line with the record box in front of them and you go do an inspection of each record box, yeah. we all have the same records. Same record, yeah. So what's the point of paying one, uh, I'm not saying prices, but a lot of money and the other one more money and the other one an uh, incredible amount of money yeah. and the other, you know, a lot of money, we're only DJs, sure. we're playing other people's music and some of ours if we produce, some of them don't even. Sure. and then. We're getting all that money to play other people's music and what? Doing it like this? It, it, should, it should be you a know, show. It should be like at least, a performer. At least, yeah. yeah, if you're not creating anything, dancing or something like Britney Spears that she's dancing and singing or Madonna and it's all her tunes, at least do something. And I'm not saying, sorry, and, I'm, and don't get, get me wrong, people that fake a show. Yeah. Behind the decks, I hate it. Don't yeah. get me wrong. As I'm in not physically, saying as in their enjoyment, or physically fake, like do some moves, and they don't. You see that it's a show. They're doing it to themselves, and not yeah, like else. stupid thing. Are you gonna name any names, or no, no. I won't. <laughs> but what I will say is that that you can you that you can right away you can spot them. Yeah. It's not about doing a show. Yeah. It's about feeling it. If you feel it, and if you love it then naturally just doing this because you're loving it yeah. will make the people scream. Such a difference. I mean. That's what I mean. I'm not saying like... <laughs> This is a funny story. In Texas, I get this um, little uh, piece of paper from a guy. He it, it goes up to me, and I appreciated him because people sometimes have three records on at the same time. They don't have a clue. Sure. They're very selfish. They don't care. They don't understand you're working, and you're not only working, but you're actually mixing at that moment. Yeah. They, and they want to talk they about their life, you know? At once, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, sure. this guy was really, really respectful. Sure. He came up to me, said nothing just did this while I was DJing. So I turned around, obviously I felt someone touching me and I try to be nice. Sure. I don't want it. Some people are really sensitive and if I don't respond, yeah. they're gonna think I'm rude, but I'm working. It's not, you know, I, one moment later I might have time, but sure. yeah. So um, he, he puts this piece of paper on the table and um, later on after my set, I take it. The guy is away. He never wanted to talk to me, which is uh, really, I, I, I respect people like that sure. and it's called it's written do you believe in love at first listen wow and i'm like wow <laughs> check so out relentless number seven yeah. coming out november 5th 2001 it's the a little b, plug there the b side <laughs> it's a track with my voice through a vocal order yeah. ro very robotish sure. yeah do you believe in love at first listen? Wow, that's All fantastic. Like of the track. And if I see that guy again in my life, I'll give him this record. <laughs> fantastic. That's Chances a great are I won't, but whatever. <laughs> you you know. never know. I mean, he's probably going to hear it and track you down. So exactly. He's going to ask for rights. And oh no! <laughs> Wait, I learned how to say it in Australia. Oh no! <laughs> no way! <laughs> I love it. I love that accent.
Yeah, yeah, you worked a bit a fair bit with Christian Smith, collaborating on a few tracks. Um, is there anyone upcoming who you'd like to work with or are working with with some upcoming releases? Production wise? Yes. Okay. Christian is really my best friend, and for me to work with him was more like, okay, what are we doing today? Um, yeah, cloudy Let's day. Go the beach Let's or... go in the studio. Okay. Yeah, there's no beach in Montreal. Sniff, you know, <laughs> it's like very sad about it. Yeah. Okay, so it's more that. It's more I'll like work on my geography for next time. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Well, there's beaches, but yeah. lakes and yeah, stuff, sure. you know. Yeah. That's why. So. It was more like that. I mean, yeah, I'm exaggerating. Of course, we must have said, let's do a record and EP together. But the fact is, because we are friends, then this was an option. Sure. The opposite wouldn't be true for someone like me. I respect so many, so many, so many artists, um, production-wise. So you, you wouldn't like to approach someone, or? I would not want to it's even try. Happen. No, if it happens, it happens. But I'm not going to try to chase people, or, or even, I, I'm not even thinking about, like, let's say I like Ben Sims. I like his productions. Sure. And Ben Sims, when I'm in London, I'm gonna give him a car, we're gonna go out for dinner. I'm not even gonna think one moment that to go in the studio with him, first of all, I'm not, I'm not pretending you would want to, but let's say you would want to, it, it's not in, even in my mind, because I'm like, this guy is amazing, as many others, like, keep on doing your music, and sure. I'll play your music, and I'll me, whatever it. style I have, that some people like it, some people don't. I'll keep on doing my music and stuff. You know, co-production sometimes can be really nice, but sometimes it's just a flop, or sure. it's just a, uh, it's just a, com a compromise of two styles where it doesn't mean it's gonna get better. Yeah. Compromising styles sometimes it gets an amazing thing, but sometimes it's just an average thing. But fortunately, you and Christian Smith it really gelled. It, it was a good collaboration together. Look, honestly, Com I other. think it was good, yeah. but honestly, I don't think it was anything so new and so uh, amazing. And that's probably why I say very uh, hum humbly, sure, yeah. <laughs> is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah. Fine. Yeah. That um, sometimes co-productions, it's fine. It's not going to be crap. But if it's nothing new, then just leave it like it is. Yeah. Do your things, do your things, and hang out and go to the restaurant good, instead of, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. We're all traveling. Like right now, I'm in Melbourne. I could go in the studio with Digby or, you know. But look, I had so much fun with him walking in the botanic gardens <laughs> that I think this was that more. Very, that sounds very romantic. No, there was, the other Simon was there. Oh. Don't worry about it. And he has a girlfriend. <laughs>
which is really good. They're playing it in, in the mix tonight. I had an interview on the phone live with yep. them. They were playing it. Uh, it it's good. Laurent Fantastic. Garnier sent some uh, feedback saying that he's going to support it a lot. So it might be a big record. I hope so. Yeah. And I'm happy about it. I'm really proud. And this is coming in November. So the EP title is Growing Pains. It's negative, isn't it? Growing pains, but you see what? Like, well, what that's... happens in the world is that that's what I feel. It's growing pains, yeah. you know. People, you know, going into buildings yeah. with their planes. It's people are crazy. It's so sad. Anyway, so it's relentless number seven coming out in November. Cameras ready. Prepare to flash. Fantastic. Right. Now um, we are at Slinky tonight. Can you tell us about some of your experiences at Slinky? You've been yes. there a few times. Right, um, I will. Being a lot of it in the mixes will not have been there, so maybe give us a bit of a background. and. Okay. Great party. Well produced. Great sound system. Um, commercial though. Sure. Which is fine. You prefer more intimate? Not necessarily. It was very intimate. The, okay. the techno room was very intimate. The thing is that uh, because it's a commercial party, I do have a feeling that, because this is the, the same everywhere in the world, I don't need to be an experienced of uh, Australia, which I am not, to be able to talk that way, it's the same everywhere. I know, I'm sure that because it's a commercial party, um, the real techno crowd won't go. They're going to boycott. Boycott in English it yes, works, yes, yeah? Yes. They're going to boycott parties like this and they're not going to come. I know that I have some true fans there that they told me we would not usually come to this type of event, but we really wanted to hear you for a long time. It's your first appearance, so we came. Yeah. You went off. It was great. Thank you, DJ. So therefore, if I was in the main room, if I was a Mario Pio or any, then I'd say, oh, perfect spot for me, you yeah, know? Sure. The next day, you sell 10,000 more records. Yeah. But it's not my case it's here. Like, yeah. But I, it was good. Enough people and really nice vibes. So. Now, one of your tracks I love tonight, you spin me right round. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that was all, like, it was just nice, vocals. isn't I it? I really enjoyed it. Do you know who did that record? No, I didn't. Me neither. <laughs> I'm looking for it. I'm trying to find out and I don't know. It's like a white label or something, you do. It's a big ah. time uh, bootleg, so it's dangerous if, if even if. Actually, if so I knew, I shouldn't tell you. Yeah. If you knew, you shouldn't tell me. Because we don't want to... We'll talk about it afterwards. I might actually know. Oh, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> sure. So, um, nice, like, nice record. Yeah, I like it. All right. Well, thank you for, for joining us tonight. I think, right. I mean, as much as all the people tonight enjoyed the set, hopefully people at home enjoy your interview. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. you Spira. so much. And go to relentlessmusic.com and you, you go and, uh, and, and put your comments there. <laughs> cool. <laughs> thank you. Much. Thanks. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, come on, come on.